in the history book of science, there lies a very disheartening and haunting chapter about a radioactive hunk of metal that claimed the lives of two scientists who were performing almost the same experiment in almost the same way. The demon core was a spherical subcritical mass of plutonium weighing 6.2 kilograms and measuring 89 mm in diameter. It was manufactured during World War II by the United States' top secret science experiment to develop the atomic bomb, the Manhattan Project. The demon core was originally supposed to be the core for the third nuclear bomb that was to be dropped on Japan. But when Japan surrendered, it was dismantled and handed over to the Los Alamos laboratory for performing research on nuclear physics and potential later use. Harry Doglian was a physicist who worked on the Manhattan Project. Doglian was conducting a criticality experiment with the plutonium core at the Los Alamos National Laboratory in New Mexico. The experiment involved using a set of neutron reflecting tungsten carbide bricks to bring the subcritical mass of plutonium 239 closer to the point of a self sustaining nuclear chain reaction. In the experiment, Doglian would place tungsten bricks around the core which caused the neutrons that were getting released by the core itself to bounce back at the core. This reflection of neutrons increased the reactivity of the core, much like control rods do in a nuclear reactor. He would keep placing bricks till the point where the core almost went supercritical. Doglian was attempting to measure the effects of different materials on the reactivity of the plutonium core. If the core went supercritical, a self-sustaining chain reaction would start and a lot of energy would get released, much like in a nuclear bomb. The only difference here would be that there won't be any explosion. The release of energy would be in the form of heat and ionizing radiation. Ionizing radiation refers to a type of radiation that carries enough energy to remove tightly bound electrons from atoms or molecules, thus ionizing them. This is dangerous for humans because ionizing radiation can cause biological damage by ionizing atoms or molecules within living cells, which can disrupt chemical bonds and damage DNA, leading to cell death and mutations. On August 21, Doglian had performed the exact experiment successfully during the day. He later returned to the lab alone at night and was performing his experiment as usual. He was placing bricks till the point of supercriticality. But unfortunately, while placing his final brick, he accidentally slipped and dropped the brick on the assembly. The plutonium core immediately went supercritical. There was a flash of blue light and a wave of heat. Doglin quickly knocked the brick with his right hand, but he had already received a severe dose of ionizing radiation. After the accident, Doglian was immediately taken to the Los Alamos hospital. As his condition worsened, he experienced severe complications from the radiation exposure. Despite medical efforts, his condition continued to deteriorate, and he passed away 25 days after the accident due to the effects of acute radiation sickness. He was only 24. This is the picture of Doglian's right hand nine days after the accident. Doglian wasn't completely alone at the lab. A security guard, Robert J. Hamily, was sitting at his desk 10 to 12 feet away from the plutonium core. He also reported seeing a brief flash of blue light and a wave of heat. Robert died 33 years after the accident of acute myelogenous leukemia, believed to be caused by the radiation he had received. Just for your information, the symptoms of radiation sickness include nausea, vomiting, fatigue, headache, weakness, diarrhea, fever, dehydration, hair loss, skin damage. Nine months after the Doglian accident, Louis Alexander Slotin started his experiments with the Demon Core. He was a Canadian physicist and chemist who too was a part of the Manhattan Project and was also there comforting Doglian while he was in the hospital. The purpose of Slotin's experiment was to study the criticality of the subcritical mass of plutonium by manually controlling the distance between two beryllium hemispheres using nothing but the blade of a flathead screwdriver. Beryllium is a neutron reflector that enhances the efficiency of a fission reaction. 
Slotin's setup consisted of the plutonium core and two half spherical beryllium shells, known as temper spheres. The temper spheres surrounded the core and reflected neutrons back into the core, much like tungsten carbide bricks Doglian used, increasing the probability of a self sustaining reaction. However, in comparison, Slotin's experiment was much, much more dangerous than Doglian's. Enrico Fermi reportedly told Slotin and others, you will be dead within a year if you continue performing this experiment that way. And renowned physicist Richard Feynman called this experiment Tickling the Dragon's Tail. Slotin had performed his Tickling the Dragon's Tail experiment dozens of times in his trademark blue jeans and cowboy boots. But on May 21, 1946, while lowering the top reflector, Slotin's screwdriver slipped outwards a fraction of an inch, allowing the reflector to fall into place around the core. Instantly, there was a flash of blue light and a wave of heat. This time, the dragon had woke up. The core had become supercritical, releasing an intense burst of neutron radiation. Slotin quickly flipped the reflector off the assembly, but the damage had already been done. There were seven other people in the lab with Slotin. After seeing the flash and feeling the heat, they started to run. Slotin shouted at them to stop and return to the exact position they were standing before. He tossed them a piece of chalk and asked them to mark where they were standing. By knowing their position and distance from the core, Slotin could calculate how much radiation each of them received. Or more pessimistically, he could calculate how much of their life has just been shortened by the radiation. Slotin was positioned just over the assembly, which shielded others from most of the radiation, but he himself received a lethal dose of radiation. Slotin would die nine days later in the same hospital as Harry Doglian because of the same experiment involving the same radioactive core and in the same lab. They were even looked after by the same nurses. The flash of blue light Doglian and Slotin saw is known as Cherenkov radiation. When a charged particle moves through a dielectric medium such as air, water or glass at a speed greater than the speed of light in that medium, it disrupts the electromagnetic field in the medium. This disruption causes the release of electromagnetic radiation in the form of a cone of light. The light emitted is in the form of photons and can be observed as a characteristic blue glow. 